Hello everyone, I'm Ethan, the founder of Outcast Games, and in this episode of Bite Size UE5, I'll be covering the new Chaos Physics System. The old physics system used inside of Unreal Engine 4 was NVIDIA's PhysX system. It wasn't created or owned by Epic Games. It was a third-party system that they were using inside of the engine. With Chaos, they've created their own system with a lot of improvements over the old PhysX system. Namely, it is more deterministic. It is not completely deterministic, but Epic has taken a huge step towards complete determination through the implementation of asynchronous ticking. The Chaos Physics system supports rigid body dynamics, new rigid body animation nodes, cloth simulation, physical animation, ragdoll physics, destruction, vehicle simulation, hair simulation, and fluid simulation. The new rigid body animation nodes and the physical animation have complete feature parity with the old legacy version. The rigid body animation nodes provide new functionality, and a huge problem was solved. Before in Unreal Engine 4, the physics asset editor and the actual editor window inside of Unreal Engine, well they didn't use the same underlying solver for some reason, and that caused issues. There is disparity between what you'd see in the physics asset editor and what you'd see in the Unreal Engine editor window, and that has been fixed in Unreal Engine 5. They both use the same solver, which is much better. Both of these are also much more stable at lower iteration counts, and increased performance and reliability is something that will just pretty much apply to everything in the Chaos Physics system. Moving on, we have Cloth Physics. Now, there were some large changes. Most of the settings are completely different, but there's more control, the simulations are more accurate, especially the wind simulations, and there's more control over the quality to performance ratio. Here's the character from the Unreal Engine 5 demo, and there's this piece of cloth here. Um, and I have this clothing tab open, and in it you can see that there's a, a whole lot of settings here, and they all do various things. You can change mass mode, the mass of the cloth, the density of the cloth, and everything here has an effect, although sometimes it is very subtle. Collision thickness, if you hear if the cloth or the clothing of the character is clipping through the character, this is how you fix that. And then you have continuous collision detection. Dampening, animation properties, simulation properties. Can increase the iteration count at the cost of performance to get more fidelity. There's just a lot of stuff here and I just recommend you open up the demo and play around with all the cloth settings yourself and then you'll be able to see what kind of effect the settings have. The cloth physics are pretty self-explanatory. The more you play with them, uh, just the better of a feel you'll get for them and they'll become much more intuitive to you. Chaos Destruction is perhaps the flagship feature of the Chaos Physics system. Older destruction systems such as the old Apex Destruction system didn't do dynamic fracturing. Most physics systems didn't. You, They would just cut up the mesh and then an event would call for the destruction of that mesh and it would fall apart along predetermined fracture lines, and that is nowhere near the case with Chaos Destruction. Chaos Destruction will dynamically fracture meshes as they are damaged in real time during gameplay providing cinematic quality destruction in real time. And there are a ton of settings to determine exactly how a mesh will fracture, when it will fracture, how much pressure or stress needs to be applied for it to fracture the list really just goes on. Now I have a little example set up here. If I click play, 
the chair will fall out of the sky and break apart when it hits the table. And this is all using Chaos Destruction. I will go much more in depth on Chaos Destruction in a future mini Chaos Destruction series that I'll be beginning to work on fairly soon. Um, but until then, I'll go ahead and show you how to replicate this effect. I don't want to go too in depth here because it's easy to get lost in the system and this video really needs to stay bite sized. So click the table and then go into this fracture editing mode or whatever mesh you're using of course it doesn't have to be this table and the and then you click new and you can create a geometry collection and you can do this um, with multiple assets selected as well then you can select a fracture mode let's do clustered with this one there is various settings here I won't get deeply into them all here you can find more information on the documentation and of course I'll be covering all of this in the chaos destruction mini series that I will be creating in the future so let's go ahead and click fracture and now if we go over here, let's set the damage threshold to a value much higher than 250. Because if I just click play at 250, it will immediately fall apart. So let's set this to something like 2000. And let me go out of the fracture editing mode and now raise it up. I pulled the mesh out of its fracture of sorts and it was doing some weird things so make sure you go out to the fracture editing mode before you move things around and now if I click play it will fall and break apart and we can see lumen working there as well with some of the bounce diffuse and to use the regular textures there's a setting here called show bone colors disable that and your asset will look perfectly normal. In Unreal Engine 5 there is also a cache system for the chaos destruction that allows for the replaying of well physics simulations and these replayed simulations can become interactive when the player comes into contact with them. On top of all of this the chaos destruction system is deeply integrated with the new physics field system and Niagara. The three of them work really well together and they all can be used to accomplish a lot of things. The sky really is the limit here. Though, is the sky really the limit? Or, well, I mean, Unreal Engine 5 uses 64-bit floating points, so that dramatically increases the scale and the size that any world can be, so... I think the limit might be higher up than the sky here. Chaos vehicles are more performant than before and there are fewer limitations, though many things have remained the same on the editor user interface side. The biggest changes are that there is no limit on the amount of wheels the vehicle can have, there are aerial foil surfaces that can add downforce or uplift and can act as spoilers on a car or even wings on an airplane according to the documentation and I'm super interested to see what people come up using that. On top of this, you can have any number of forward and reverse gears as well. So I'm inside the default chaos vehicle project inside of Unreal Engine 5. I have some input issues here, there we go. And it plays very similarly to the default vehicle project inside of Unreal Engine 4. Most of the changes are behind the scenes and we can see some of them if we go to the chaos vehicle blueprint and select the vehicle movement component we can add an unlimited amount of wheels now if we search for our transmission setup we can add an infinite amount of forward and reverse gears and as I've stated, there's aerial foils as well. Um, again, I'm trying to keep this video bite-sized, so I'm not going to go in-depth into Chaos Vehicles and what's new with them. 
but if you would like me to, let me know and I will make a video on it at some point in the future. Physics fields are completely new to Unreal Engine 5. Essentially, they are fields that can be dragged in and they can affect physics in a variety of different ways. It is a large system and I'm not going to cover it in this video. Instead, it'll be the topic of the next bite-sized UE5 video. Last, but definitely not least, perhaps greatest, is asynchronous ticking. It improves determinism for a predictable results and it will be the foundation of using physics in multiplayer. To enable async ticking in a project, go to project settings and search, if I can type this correctly, async tick. And we have this option here called tick physics async. Check it and asynchronous ticking is now enabled. The vehicle demo that we have open here is now running using async tick ticking and frame rates should not affect the simulation. And playing it here, things already feel more different and I feel like I have a whole lot more control despite having low frames because I'm recording as I play this. I hope that you found this video helpful and if you did, leave a like, subscribe to the notification bell and go join the Discord too. And if you do anything cool with chaos, ping me in the Discord server, I'd love to see it. And I'll see you in the next video of Bite Sized UE5. Thank you for watching.